Suppose I want to walk along this particular line. One way that I could choose to restrict my path of walking along this line is to say that first I'm going to go halfway from the one edge to the other. So I'll just go half the distance. And then I'm halfway to my destination and maybe I'll restrict again and I'll say I can again only go half of my remaining distance, which is now one quarter of the original. So now I've gone the one half plus a quarter of the total distance. And then I'll go one-eighth of the total distance, a.k.a. one-half of the remaining distance, then one-sixteenth, then one-thirty-second, and so on. Then the question is, if I restrict myself in this way, where I only go half, 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 do I ever manage to get from one side all the way to the other? Now, one way to think about this is, first of all, I have a list of numbers, which is just a sequence as we've seen before. That is, I have this one-half, this one-quarter, this one-eighth, and so on. But I'm not really interested in just this sequence, just this list of numbers. I'm, in a sense, interested in adding them all up. Does the one-half plus the one-quarter plus the one-eighth, does all of that add up to some particular number, perhaps one, the full length of this particular distance? Well, that is something not called a sequence, but called a series. A series is when you take a sequence and you add up all of the terms. You don't just list them, you add them together. And if our notation for a sequence were to say some formula like a n is, say, in this case, one half to the power of n, then for a series, our notation is to put a sigma at the front, a summation sign. We say that the series is the sum from n equal to one up to infinity of the sequence a sub n. So in this case, the sum from n equal to one up to infinity of this one half to the power of n. And what this notation just means, when you see this big sigma, when you see these ends here, is they are an instruction of how you add things together. First you add in, when you plug in one, that's the value of a half. Then you add to that, plugging in n equal to two, which is the value of a quarter. Then you add in, plugging in n equal to three, and so on. Now, you might conjecture that the sum of all of these numbers is perhaps just one. Indeed, you might say, well, yes, it's infinitely many steps. We're going to start where we start up, and we're going to end at that goal, this spot that we've been going always half the remaining distance towards. But is that really true? And can we define some notion of this infinite sum that is consistent and makes sense to us? And can we prove that for that definition, that indeed this is going to be equal to one? And even then, if you're convinced about the situation for one half, what about if I restrict myself to saying I go one-third of the way to my destination, then one-third again, and then one-third again? I can change all of this here to have powers of one-third opposed to powers of one-half, but then again, are you as confident that the sum of this is now one? Maybe it's some other value. Okay, so let's step back a little bit and try to precisely define what we're talking about when we talk about series and adding up some particular sequence. What I'm going to begin with is that the sum of a generic sequence a sub n, so a n is a sequence and I'm taking the sum of it, is just adding the first term to the second term to the third term and so on. And we're trying to figure out whether this converges in some meaningful sense to a number, perhaps the number one. Now, one of the things I can study is something called the partial sums of this. So consider this sequence. This is the sequence s sub n and s sub n is a bit different. It's not an infinite series. It is a finite sum. It only considers the first n terms. So s sub n is a1, a2, a3, all the way down to a sub n. Uh, for instance, if I go and try to compute s1, well, s1 is the sum of the first, well, only one term. s2 is the sum of the first two terms, so a1 plus a2. s3 is the sum of the first three terms, a1, a2, a3, and so on for s4, so on for s5. Now, the real point here is that these partial sums, the s sub n, that is not a series, it is a sequence. Indeed, for any one of these individual s sub n's, it is just some number, you add up n terms together, you get some number. So for every natural number that we have, we have a value out for this partial sum, that's what we're talking about. So the way this is going to work is that I'm going to use these partial sums to define my notion of convergence. Indeed, what I'm going to say is that the series itself converges, that the sum of the ANs is equal to L if the limit of the sequence of the partial sums is going to be equal to L. And note here that 
We have already defined in the previous videos the notion of the limit of a sequence. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence Sn being L, that is a notion of convergence we understand. The notion of a series converging to L, we didn't previously have that, and this is the definition. It says, let's look at the partial sums. Let's look at, say, adding the first million terms, and the first billion terms, the first trillion terms, as long as you wish, where you're investigating these partial sums. Well, if those partial sums start approaching some value, that is our definition of the convergence of the series.